Matthew chapter 22. We'll begin reading verse number 1. The Bible said, And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables. Now a parable is a earthly story with a hidden heavenly truth. And there's a lot of times Jesus communicates to us on our level, because if he didn't, we wouldn't be able to comprehend it. And that's why throughout the Bible he'll use uh, things that we're familiar with. He'll use the animal kingdom or the vegetation kingdom or practical things of life so we can wrap our minds around what he's about to say or what he's trying to teach us. And so here he's going to again speak to them in parables. Let's read verse 2. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. Again he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all, the things, and all things are ready, come unto the marriage. But they made light of it, and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth. And he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. Then saith he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore to the highways, and as many as ye shall find bid to the marriage." So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guest, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he saith unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither, not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the good singing. Thank you, Lord, for being the master of our seas. And thank you, Lord, for being the master of grace. Lord, we thank you that we've been covered with a blanket of grace. We're thankful for saving grace, sustaining grace, and all the kinds of graces we'll face, living grace and even dying grace. Lord, uh, I like that old song, I know that I made it, and I made it by grace. And Lord, we're thankful that it's a grace way, because Lord, if it was a works way, we wouldn't make it. Lord, there's not enough good works for us to do to merit your favor. Now, Father, we do pray for Sister May tonight. We pray you'd touch her and help her there at the hospital. And, God, we pray for Miss Barb and her family as well. And, God, we pray your will would be done. Father, we pray for others that may be sick and those that are providentially hindered, that, God, you would bless them and help them. Now, Father, for the next few minutes, help our minds to be centered upon the Word of God. Help us, Lord, to draw nigh to God that he might draw nigh to us. Speak to our hearts, send revival these days. God, uh, deal with us, Lord, not after uh, uh, our deserving, and don't deal with us in, in your anger, but, Father, deal with us in grace. And God, we certainly pray if there be any amongst us who are not saved, we pray tonight would be the night of their salvation. Lord, have your will away now. Bless, use this unworthy vessel. We'll bless you and praise you for it. For it's in the wonderful and holy and glorious name of the Lord Jesus we ask it all. Amen and amen. And we find that this parable deals with a lot of things. Uh, can I say that the book of Matthew is written to the Jews and this parable was given an account to the Jews and it deals with 
John chapter 114, He came unto His own, His own received Him not, but as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name. We find that in many uh, prophets and many uh, servants were sent to the Jews throughout the history of the Jews, uh, and a lot of times they were beaten, a lot of times they were stoned and killed uh, because the people didn't want to hear what they had to say. We also find that it pictures uh, the local church. Uh, 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 the Lord sends us forth to tell folks uh, and invite them to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Uh, and uh, uh, we find that uh, um, some receive it with gladness, but yet many don't want to hear it, don't want to re uh, uh, receive the good things of God. Uh, but I, I was reading this yesterday, and I got to uh, looking at this, and I got to thinking about this, and I want you to notice those who are invited. I find they fall into different categories, and, and I know many of you invite your co-workers, and many of you invite your neighbors, and many of you invite your family, uh, and uh, they all tend to make excuse, as one uh, other portion of the gospel said, they began to make excuse why they couldn't come. But notice, if you will, uh, 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 these that were invited, uh, and we'll get to the message. Can I say that some just flat out refused to come? Look at verse number 3. And he sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. There are some that maybe uh, 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 know they need to come, but they just flat out refuse to come. Uh, there are some of you that have invited and invited and invited and invited. Uh, if you invite them to dinner, they'll come. If you invite them to an activity, they'll come. Uh, but you invite them to church, they just refuse to come. Can I say there are just some who refuse to come? Uh, they've already made up their mind uh, about God. They've made up their mind about eternity. They've made up their mind uh, whether or not uh, 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 they, they want to deal with religion. Uh, most people out there, Brother Rod, have the mentality, uh, uh, when the Lord comes, He's going to weigh all their good traits and all their bad traits, uh, and if their good outweighs their bad, they'll be allowed to go to heaven. Uh, and most people think that they're good moral people, and in reality, they are good moral people. Uh, but they've got the wrong scale. They're judging themselves uh, against other people. Uh, uh, but hey, uh, the scale God uses... Uh, he judges us according to Christ. And we all come short of the glory of God. And there is no one righteous. There is none good. No, not one. And my dear friends, so we find that their theology is not biblically based. Their theology is pie in the sky hoping that it's right. Hmm? They just flat refuse to come. Brother Phil was talking on visitation the other night about his co-workers, and he, he invited one fellow to come, and the fellow looked at him like he had two heads. To church? Yeah. Why don't you come to church? There are some who refuse to come. Can I say this? There are some, they ridicule you instead of coming. Look at verse number 5. It says, but they made light of it and went their ways. Hmm? There are some that will ridicule you, they'll uh, make light of you coming to church. How many of you have invited somebody to church and they say, you're going back to church again? You go three times a week? What is wrong with you that you got to go to church three times a week? They make light of it. We don't have to come. We delight in coming. You see, we got more than religion. We got the Savior. And we have a relationship with Almighty God. Uh, and it is not a detriment to come to church. Uh, it's a joy to come to church. Uh, the church is an oasis from this old wicked world. Uh, and for a little while we can set our minds and our affections on heavenly things. Uh, and we can uh, uh, get some help for our lives. Uh, but they make light of it. They make light of church and make light of you coming to church. And, and uh, 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 they just ridicule you. Oh, there, there's that Jesus freak. There's that fellow who's got to go to church all the time. There's that lady that's all the time talking about church. And, and they ridicule you because you're saved. Hmm? Huh? Now, I don't know if you heard today 
the FBI at, of all places, Hardee's, raided Mike Lindell, the My Pillow guy. Now, they raided him because he stood up for Trump, but there's a little bit more about it. He has been absolutely made fun of because he's a Christian. If you read his testimony, it'll bless your heart. He was the biggest drug dealer in, in, in the entire area, and God saved him. And then God gave him the ability to start his little factory. He started it in his garage. And he began to hire Christian people. And his company is a Christian company. And uh, 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 he just wanted to uh, uh, help people and, and do some things for people. Uh, and because of that, they make him out to be a, be a buffoon. And kind of like a fellow by the name of Tim Tebow. Now, I don't know about you, but I think the NFL and any sports league needs more people like Tim Tebow. Uh, uh, I, I don't know if you know this or not, but like the NBA, most of those guys got about uh, 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 17 illegitimate children all over the country, uh, and, and a lot of them are thugs and thieves. Uh, and listen, I have no use for anybody that's getting paid millions of dollars, uh, and when old glories are flying and they play the national anthem and they take a knee in protest, uh, 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 hey, uh, at least when Tim Tebow took a knee, he was praying and thanking God for being good to him. They ran him out of the league because he wasn't ashamed of Jesus. Hmm? And can I say, if you're not careful, they'll run you off the job hmm, because you love Jesus. Some refuse to come. Some ridicule instead of coming. But then some are just resentful and vindictive. Look at verse 6. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. There are some people that are so nasty towards Christians, they take it out on Christians. They're just resentful and vindictive. That's terrible. Hmm? This world would be a whole lot better off if there were more Christians, and this world would be better off if the Christians that are in it would stand up and be a Christian. Hmm? Uh. Uh, I don't know about you, but I, I'm sick and tired of Christians thinking they're supposed to be welcome mats and everybody just wipe their feet on them. Yeah. No, we're to stand up and make, make up the gap in the hedge. Right. And we're to be counted for Christ's sake. Yeah. Mm, they were uh, treated spitefully and slow, slew for their faith. And there's some people that are just resentful and vindictive towards the things of God. Think about it. What did Jesus ever do to them? Loved them? Died for their sin? Sent somebody to them to tell them they could be saved and go to heaven when they die? Boy, that sounds like a reason to get all upset and vindictive, doesn't it? Sure. Mm. But in the last days, it said they'd, they'd t t take those things which were evil and call them good, and those things good and call them evil. Huh? You can take, you can take uh, the worst drug dealer in, in, in the county and they'll make a hero out of him if something happens in his life, but you get somebody that's saved and they'll make them out to be uh, 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 an absolute uh, uh, detriment to society because they got the audacity to go to church and pray and seek the Lord. It's just like our school systems. It's okay if you want to proclaim you're a dog or a cat, but you carry a Bible in there and they treat you like a terrorist. Hmm? God help us. But then there's some others that replicate when they do come. Look at verse 11. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. See, there are some who give the appearance they're a Christian, but they're not wearing a wedding garment. Hmm? Did you ever have somebody on the job or somebody in the neighborhood who will tell you they're a Christian but their life don't back it up? Uh, can I say there are folks who come to church who will, will tell you they're a Christian but their life don't back it up? Hmm? Let me help you something. The king knows who has on a wedding garment and who doesn't. Hmm? 
2 uh, Timothy chapter 3 and verse 5 says, Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. There's folks that have a form of godliness. Now, uh, when Brother Ray and, and the fellows that helped him poured that concrete back there on that brush harbor, they just didn't come out and dump concrete on the ground. And they set up a form. And they had it all prepared so the concrete knew exactly where to go. But can I say, if all you got's a form, you've just got a shell. You've got an empty shell. There's nothing to it. It wasn't until the concrete went in it that it was full of something. There's a lot of folks that have a form of godliness. Oh, they, they know how to be real churchy when they're around church folks. Hmm? Mm. Thinking of a fella one time. If anybody told him they was a Christian, he believed him. Huh? There's a lot of folks mm, claim to be a Christian. But they don't know the God of the Bible. And they certainly don't live a biblical life. They have a form of godliness. Jude talks about them like this in verse 12. These are spots in your feast of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water, carried about with winds. Trees whose fruit withereth without fruit. Twice dead, plucked up by the roots. Uh, neighbor, when we get to heaven, you're going to see... There were a lot of tares sowed in with the wheat. There's a lot of folks who used to come to church with you. A lot of folks that used to feast with you uh, when we'd have a dinner on the ground. A lot of folks that uh, 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 you got accustomed to seeing, but you won't see them in heaven. Mm -mm. Serious business. Dealing with eternal life. And then the last thing I want you to see how these verses says, some will face retribution for their actions. Look at verse number 7. When the king heard thereof, he was wroth. Heard what? That they slew those men that went to invite them to the wedding. He was wroth, and he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. I've got news for you. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises. And one of his promises is, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Uh, sometimes we get weary thinking about all the mistreatment of God's people, but God's keeping a record. And friend, you, you wait and see what he does. Matter of fact, I've done read the back of the book. When he shows up with his army, he starts slaying with the sword that goes forth from his mouth. And the Bible says the blood of those that are slain goes all the way to the bit in the horse's mouth. They leave the bodies out for the fowls of the air to eat. That doesn't sound like that little sissified Jesus Joel Olstein talks about. Hmm? Uh, can I say, there is retribution coming. R.G. Lee preached, and I just got a new R.G. Lee book. It was published in 1930. Just got it yesterday. R.G. Lee preached a famous message. There's a payday someday. Christian, hang in there. There's a payday coming for you and I. But lost person, there's a payday coming for you too. Uh, look with me, if you will, uh, 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 in verse 13. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him, the one without the wedding garment. Bind him hand and foot, take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Can I say? Nobody's going to heaven without a wedding garment on. Hmm. Now, as I begin to look at this, I, I, I want to focus on verse 14. Verse 14 says, For many are called, but few are chosen. For many are called, but few are chosen. I'm going to preach for just a few minutes tonight on the chosen few. The chosen few. Now, don't let your theology all get bent out of shape right here. All right? Uh, when I'm talking about the chosen few, now I'm talking about the elect, now I'm talking about them that are saved by grace through faith. 
Hmm? Uh, God never predestinated who would be saved and who would not be saved. Uh, the Bible makes it very clear that God predestinated that we would be saved through Christ. What was predestinated is that Jesus was the Lamb slain before the foundation of the world. That Jesus would go to Calvary, that he would shed his blood to become the propitiation for the sins of man. Uh, Jesus tasted death for every man. Uh, and the Bible says, whosoever will may come uh, and drink of the water of life freely. Uh, 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 my dear friends, uh, uh, God did not predestinate some to go to heaven and some to go to hell. The chosen few are those that received uh, what God said it was going to take to be saved. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, and you and I that are saved tonight, we ought to bless the Lord that we're part of the family of God. Amen. So you're all right with your theology? All right. The chosen few tonight, uh, in, in context of this parable of the Lord Jesus Christ, can I say in order to be part of the chosen few, the chosen few, first of all, received an invitation. We have three accounts in this uh, 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 passage of Scripture alone uh, where servants were sent out uh, and they invited folks to come to a wedding. Uh, and hey, neighbor, hallelujah, thanks be unto God uh, for the day that you realized uh, uh, God was speaking to you uh, and he was inviting you uh, uh, to come to a wedding. Uh, uh, the Bible said, Blessed are they, uh, the Lord told John, right, Blessed are they which are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Uh, uh, nobody gets there without an invitation. Uh, and can I say, uh, there's a general call in the Scripture. Uh, 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 the Bible says, For God so loved the world... Uh, uh, that, and that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, that's everybody uh, uh, believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life uh, there is a general call uh, whosoever will may come uh, a general call uh, but thanks be unto God uh, uh, when the word of God became real to you uh, and you got under conviction and you realized God was speaking to you uh, and you got the specific call uh, and that day uh, under conviction uh, uh, you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Uh, 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 but hey, uh, 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 the chosen few received an invitation. Mm. We invite people to come to church in hopes that God will speak to their heart and that they'll receive the invitation of Christ to come to the family of God. Uh, the chosen few received an invitation. Can I say this? The chosen few responded to the call. Mm-mm. I don't know about you, especially in an election year, you ever get junk mail you just throw away? Hmm. I don't know how many thousands of tracts and pieces of literature that we've handed out in the 23 years that I've been pastor here, but I can say that by and large, most of them hit the garbage can. Hmm. But in order to be one of the chosen few... When you got the invitation, you responded to the call. Huh? Well, you realize that it was God speaking to you. You realize that God was inviting you to the family of God. You realize that God loved you and he died for you uh, and you were lost without God, uh, but you could be saved uh, and you responded to the call. Uh, uh, you came and received Christ as Lord and Savior. Uh, now, you don't have to be in church to get saved. It's a good place to be saved. Uh, you can get saved at the house. You can get saved uh, uh, in a car. You can get saved under a tree. You can get saved anywhere when you realize that God's speaking to your heart. Uh, but can I say, what a blessing mm, to receive an invitation, but you must respond to the call of God. Uh, can I say this? The chosen uh, few became resolved to attend the wedding. Hmm? Oh, what a blessing. I'm glad for the night I got saved. And I'm glad that God put something in me that caused me to want to live like I saved. Yeah. Mm. Huh? I um, didn't realize all that I got, Brother Brian, when I got saved. I just knew I was lost, and I called on the Lord, and He, he saved me. I didn't realize all that came with that. I didn't realize I got a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. 
I didn't realize that I had a book full of promises and they were all for me. Yeah, I didn't realize that I'd have a better life in this life uh, and then I had eternal life waiting on me. Uh, uh, but listen, uh, once I started uh, studying the Bible after I got saved, uh, I realized, uh, hey, I want to do more than make heaven my home. Uh, I want to make the Savior happy with my life. Uh, and I was only uh, I, um, was go uh, uh, planning on going to heaven. I was reading resolved uh, uh, that while I was headed that way uh, I was going to enjoy the trip uh, and I was going to live for Jesus Christ uh, I wonder I've got a real problem with somebody that says they're saved uh, but you never see them go to church they, they don't ever read their Bible they don't ever uh, listen to good godly music they don't do anything associated with Christians but they're going to heaven. Huh? You'll know a tree by the fruit it bears. Now, listen. You can hoodwink me, but you won't hoodwink God. But I do know this. There are some things that God don't let me get away with and he's no respecter of persons, and if he won't let me get away with them, chances are he's not going to let you get away with them either. Hmm? Uh, if you belong to God, he does know how to chasten his children. Now, I, I mentioned this the other day. I'm going to bring it up again because it's on my mind. When I was in revival down there in Georgia, and uh, that night I preached on uh, heaven and why you're not going there was a lady came to the altar and the preacher's wife dealt with her and then the pastor dealt with her and then the pastor handed off for me to deal with her and the lady was generally tore up I mean she was squalling in the altar she was tore up and for all of her professed Christian life brother Phil she doubted whether or not she was saved now can I say that that is no way to live and that's not the will of God for you to live that way my darling little girl's right here right now. You ask her if she's a foster, she'll tell you she's a foster. Hmm? And she's got a lot of her dad's bad traits. Huh? But, but can I say, she doesn't get up every day doubting whether or not she belongs to the foster family. Miss hmm? Jackie, you don't, you don't get up every day doubting whether or not you belong to Jack and Cinda Loudon. You're even named after your daddy. Huh? Mm, by the way, if you're saved, you're named after Christ. You're called a Christian. Huh? Yeah. This lady was doubting. She's in her 40s. She's been doubting for over 30 years whether or not she had it. And she didn't know how to let go because this doubt consumed her life. And I just showed her. Matter of fact, I showed her your verse, Brother James. Romans 10, 13. I just pointed out. I just kept reading it to her. I said, can God lie? She said, no. I said, read it again. I said, will God lie to you? No. Read it again. And then all of a sudden she broke. And she called on the Lord and got saved. When the preacher asked her to tell the church what happened to her, you know what she did? She quoted Romans 10, 13. She said, I'm saved. Romans 10, 13 saved. Hallelujah. Uh, you know why? She had all those years lived in doubt because of what her mother did to her. As a 10-year-old child, she's sitting in church, the preacher preached on hell, and it scared her to death, and she ran to the bathroom. Her mother went and said, What's wrong with you? She said, I don't want to die and go to hell. And her mother drug her to the altar and whatever happened was on mama's account. Parents, I know sometimes you get frustrated with me when you bring your children to me. But if I don't see that the Holy Spirit's dealing with them, I let them alone. I don't want to pick somebody green. Hmm? That's all business of the Holy Spirit. He's the one that convicts. He's the one that brings them to conversion. He's the one that seals them. Up. It's all a work of Him, not me. And you do your children a disservice when you're trying to force something on them. You let the Holy Ghost get... He knows how to get them. Hmm? Uh, but I'm trying to say, after I got saved, I was resolved to make it to the wedding. Hmm? Paul says, lest when I preach to others and I myself become a castaway. 
you ought to purpose in your heart that you'll never be a once wazer. Used to be. A has been. We could fill this church up four times over people that used to come to church. Mm -mm. I don't want to be a has been. Now, I understand there are circumstances in people's lives, and I understand that there's no cut and mold for everything, but by the grace of God, I want to live for God. Huh? I'm not saying people can't have problems, but I do know this. If you step in a mud puddle, don't leave your foot in it. Get it out and get it cleaned up. Hey, you might mess up. You might have some problems, but Jesus is standing there with open arms, willing to forgive and willing to restore. I'm talking about the chosen few. They become resolved to attend the wedding. Can I say something else about them? The chosen few are furnished with a robe. That fellow right there didn't have on a wedding garment. If you're born again, you got the wedding garment. The moment you got saved, you're robed in his righteousness. And then when you go to the judgment seat of Christ, uh, 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 he then gives you the actual wedding garment. It's a white, fine, fine linen, Revelation 19. Uh, and you put on the wedding robe. Hallelujah. Huh? What a blessing. But you're furnished with a robe. Uh, Brother Tony, you didn't earn the robe. You didn't buy the robe. The robe was furnished for you. It's your size. It's wonderful. Hmm? The greatest thing in your life is the fact you're robed in Christ's righteousness. You're not standing there in your own righteousness. But what a blessing to be furnished with a robe. Hmm? Uh, it helps some of you to realize you're going to the marriage supper if you realize you've already been robed for it. Hmm? That will help some of you. You quit feeling like you're nobody. Listen, I haven't paid much attention with this Queen of England deal. I hope she was saved. I don't know if she was saved or not. Don't know much about her other than, you know, the documentaries that have been done on her and everything. The old gal's lived 96 years. The old gal had, what, I don't know, 16 presidents in her, in her reign, something like that. Uh, and the old gal stood for something. I got a feeling the next crowd coming up behind her is not going to stand for what she stood for all these years. Uh, she did sacrifice things for her life for the good of England. Hmm? I hope she was saved. But I do know something about them royals. There's a lot of pomp and circumstance. Hmm? Uh, and they're expected to live different than folks that aren't royals. Uh can I say, we only represent the greatest kingdom there is. Uh, we're not expected to live in the rudiments of this world. We're expected to live above the rudiments of this world. Now, Brother Aaron, that don't mean we think we're better, but we are to live better. We know, but by the grace of God, we're a sorry, no good scoundrel. But because of the grace of God, because the blood of Jesus has washed us and cleansed us from all sin, and because we've been robed in His righteousness, uh, uh, friends, we're not what we used to be. Hallelujah. Hey, we're not what we're going to be, but thank God we're not what we used to be. Uh, uh, and we ought to live like it. Uh, we ought to live better than what people come to expect Christians to be. You ever seen that crowd comes out of some of these churches on Sunday? Now, I'm not the brightest light bulb in a bunch, but I remember when you could go to a restaurant and you could pick out who'd been to church and who hadn't. Yeah. Nowadays, you don't know. I mean, uh, listen, I know it's not uh, what's on the outside, it's what's on the inside, but if he got real good on the inside, it'll change your outside. Uh, well, just not live like the rest of the world. Matter of fact, that fella didn't have a wedding garment on. Mm -hmm. uh, there's something wrong with that. Right. You and I ought to have our garments on. Uh, well, I spent a whole lot more time on that point than I thought I would. But we was furnished with a robe. Uh, can I say this? The chosen few will be greeted with regard. Mm -hmm. When you get to heaven, you're not taking a back seat to anybody. 
Uh, matter of fact, when we get to heaven, we're going to be shown respect we have been shown in this world. And we're going to be shown admiration that the only place you've seen in this world is amongst other church folk. Hmm? We get there, you're going to be received and greeted with regard. Uh, uh, from whoever's collecting the invitations to the king himself, you are going to be... Uh, highly esteemed in favor when we get over there. Uh, I mean, he only shed his blood for you and I. Uh, and when we get there, he's not going to say, oh, no, i got to go talk to somebody else. Uh, I've got a meeting with somebody. No, he's going to throw his arms around us. Uh, he's going to welcome us home. Uh, he's going to tell us how glad he is to see us. Uh, he's going to show us all that he's going to prepare for us. Uh, you're going to be received with regard when we get over there, neighbor. Huh? What a blessing, huh? Mm. Thought about this. The chosen few will rejoice at the feast. Mm. I, I say this all the time, and I mean it. I'm glad we're not going to the marriage fast. I'm glad we're going to the marriage feast. And I've seen quite a few of you eat. And I know you're happy about that too. I used to think Brother Peter and Brother Brian eat more than anybody in the church, but then we got Colonel Sanders right here. That old boy can eat right there now. He just getting started on his third plate. I'm telling you, man, he can put it away. Huh? Somebody said, don't call him Colonel Sanders. Well, he don't mind. Ask him. He's got an uncle or somebody that looks just like Colonel Sanders. You're not too far from the block there, bud, huh? Yeah, his dad. His dad looked just like Colonel Sanders. But can I say, we're going to the marriage feast. Have you ever seen what a feast is about? A feast is a celebration. There'll be wonderful music there'll be wonderful food there'll be wonderful fellowship and above all Christ is going to be in the middle of it all uh, uh, it's not going to be a, a wake or a mourning period uh, it's going to be a celebration uh, and we'll rejoice and we'll rejoice forevermore then I thought about this the chosen few will reside with the king hmm. uh we're not coming back. Uh, Revelation 21, 3 says, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. We're going to reside with the king forever and ever. Now the sad commentary is verse 14 itself. For many are called but few are chosen. Can I say that for the last 2,000 years, how many people received an invitation? But when the last trump is sounded, only a few are going to be chosen out of this world to go to the marriage supper compared to the millions that Jesus tasted death for. It's a sad commentary. There are some prestigious events that you might or would long to be invited to. There are. As much as I make fun of the guy sitting in the Oval Office, an invitation to the White House is a very prestigious thing. Not everybody gets one of them. An invitation to the state dinner, not everybody gets one of those things. Huh? an invitation to the governor's mansion. And I've been there. I was there with a bunch of other pastors and the former governor wanted us to pray over him. That was a prestigious thing. I imagine if you got an invitation to actually attend the funeral for the queen, that's a pretty prestigious thing. Uh, but there's never been an invitation like the invitation to go to heaven. That invitation was produced in blood and that invitation is more than an all expense paid trip that invitation it cleans your slate from time and eternity and there's nothing like that invitation and friend as beautiful as Buckingham Palace may be as beautiful as the White House may be as beautiful as some other edifices may be they pale in comparison compared to what heaven's going to be like. 
and God sends out invitations and then God sends specific invitations for people to answer the call you and I are saved or blessed that we're among the chosen few when you think of the however many billion people on this planet today and you look at how many really are saved we are a chosen few we ought to certainly be grateful and humbled and we ought to do our part to invite as many as we can to go with us say brother Doug what if they don't listen invite them anyway well, brother Doug what if they tear it up give them another one and it comes a point don't rest your laurels with them keep inviting them. invite somebody else invite somebody else but Brother James, one of the most tragic things that I can think of is not that men will just die and go to hell, but men and women will die and go to hell after being in a service like this and having an opportunity to receive the invitation of Christ and accept Him as Lord and Savior and reject it and die and go to hell from a place that's preaching the truth. There can be nothing more tragic than to get this close to heaven and die and go to hell. God help us to realize every time we come in here, it might be the only opportunity for somebody to receive the invitation. So we ought to come ready to worship. We ought to be sensitive during the worship. We certainly ought to not grieve or quench the Holy Spirit at all in the service because it might be the only opportunity somebody will ever have to get to go to heaven. God help us to realize every time we come through these doors, it's life or death. Maybe you're here tonight, and we're glad you're here, but you don't really know if you'll get to go to heaven when your life on earth is ended. We'd like to give you a specific invitation. You can know beyond a shadow of a doubt that your sins have been forgiven, that heaven will be your home because your name's been written down in the Lamb's Book of Life because you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. In a moment, we're going to give that invitation. We're going to invite you to come. Say, preacher, I don't know how to be saved. It's, it's very simple. You just got to believe with your heart that Jesus died for your sins and was buried and rose again according to the Scriptures. And you got to turn from your ways and turn to Him and say, Lord, save me. If you mean that in your heart, He'll save you. You can be saved. But if you need more than that, we'll take a Bible and show you what the Bible says about being saved. You can be saved tonight from your sin and you know heaven's going to be your home. I wouldn't risk eternity on anything else. I wouldn't risk it on, well, I'll get saved on Sunday. You don't know if Sunday's coming, friend. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll get saved right before I die. Well, there's a lot of people die without a deathbed experience. Friend, you're not even promised that God will speak with you on your deathbed. But if you're getting an invitation tonight, I wouldn't reject the Lord. Tonight might be your last opportunity. Oh, there's nothing like being part of the chosen few. And if you're here tonight and you're saved, and you know you're saved, you ought to be so thankful and grateful you get to go to heaven that you not only tell Jesus thank you, but you tell somebody else how they can go to heaven. Tell them Jesus loves them. He died for them, and he'll save them, and heaven can be their home. Say, preacher, what if they don't receive me? Just tell them again. But I'm interested tonight. If you're here and you don't know the Lord, you can. And you can leave out of here a different person than you came in. Let's all stand, Brother Clint, if you'll come pick something on a guitar for invitation. God spoke to your heart, why don't you come? Maybe you need to come tell him you love him. Maybe you need to tell him thank you. But if you're not saved, why don't you come? And we'll be glad to introduce you to Jesus. Folks are coming and praying. He's getting his guitar. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we're certainly grateful be called a saint of God we're grateful to know that we're part of the chosen few 
Lord, we're thankful for the invitation you sent my way. And Lord, we're thankful for the measure of faith that caused me to accept it and receive it. Now, Father, I pray for any amongst us tonight might have made a profession of faith, but deep down inside they know they're not part of the chosen few. They're here, but they don't have a wedding garment on. God, I pray tonight would be the night of their salvation. Maybe there's somebody here tonight, it's the first time they ever heard the gospel. Lord, I pray tonight they'd come, give their heart to the Lord. Whatever the need is, Lord, I pray that folks would respond. Lord, let God have first place in their life. Maybe somebody's saved, but they're not been living like they're saved. I pray they'd get that straightened out tonight so their life would count for Christ. Help us, Lord, to be faithful servants until you call us home. And we'll thank you for it. Speak to hearts now, for it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.